Shalom. Welcome back to Issachar Forum, a prophetic think tank. My name is Les Lawrence with Elisha Vision Ministries. Glad to have you with us today. And of course, the big news this weekend is the attack from Iran uh, against Israel, an unprecedented attack. Uh, we'll talk a lot about it. But uh, I love this, this picture I have on here today. Whoever touches Israel touches the apple of God's eye. And so, God, we pray for peace in Israel. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. Jehovah God, you are the one who neither slumbers nor sleeps. You watch over Israel. And even in this kind of an attack, we know that you're right there in the middle of it. You're on, you've got this. You're protecting Israel. Thank you for the miraculous protection that they enjoyed during this attack. And we just submit the whole situation to you, Lord, and pray that, that you will lead uh, Netanyahu and the leaders of Israel in terms of the decisions they need to make in order for retaliation or whatever they need to do. I pray they'll, they'll listen to you and, and follow your lead. And Lord, we just pray for the peace of Jerusalem and thank you, Lord, uh, for the rains that have been falling during the rainy season and, and that your promise is everlasting to Israel. So we just put our trust in you. Thank you, Father God, in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua ben Yehovah, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, um, first I want to uh, go, as I usually do, to my uh, blog post on ElishaVision.com. Uh, I talked this week about, uh, the title was, Let My People Go. And I make the point that, that there's a slogan in Israel, bring them home, bring them home, talking about the hostages. But it's actually the wrong slogan. It should be, let my people go. Because bring them home suggests that it's up to Israel. And of course, it's actually not up to Israel. It's up to Hamas to release them. All Israel can do is force the issue by conquering Gaza and conquering Rafa, the last remaining city. And uh, this picture here is actually of a, a sort of a, a Passover Seder where only a week or so away from Passover uh, in in Israel and for Jews around the world, and uh, and this is kind of a, a reminder that people are missing. There are still hostages. That's the point of that. But uh, my question is, where are the ultimatums to Hamas? Uh, in World War II, it ended by demands of the Allied powers to Germany and to Japan unconditional surrender. And I believe that's the only solution for the end of the Gaza war, unconditional surrender. And Israel needs to finish it. Uh, they obviously have plenty of other fish to fry, so to speak, with this attack this weekend from Iran, directly from Iran to Israel. So we need to remember that God is involved. He's, on, he's in charge. He's, he's uh, given direction and wisdom about Gaza, and he'll do the same about Iran. Um, well, I think I'll just uh, stop with this scripture from Romans 8. Uh, what shall we say then to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not freely with him freely to give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Of course, none of those. The victory is in God. The victory is in Jesus, the Messiah. So we stand in him. Nothing can separate us from his love. So hold fast the profession of your faith. Don't be discouraged by this attack this weekend from Iran. God's got this. God is still in control. Hallelujah. Well, uh, the IDF says 90%, 99% of the launches were intercepted and that Iran's attack failed. Uh, and, of course, there's going to be an awful lot of discussion about everything. But uh, in case you haven't heard, uh, over 330 uh, missiles were fired at Israel. And, uh, in fact, I want to show give you an idea of what they were. Uh, there were ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and, and uh, drones. 
Uh, the drones take nine hours to get from Iran to Israel. The cruise missiles take two hours, and the, the ballistic missiles take 12 minutes. And there were over 100 ballistic missiles. Those are the ones that are sent up into the, out of the atmosphere uh, and, and then back down to Earth. And Israel managed to shoot every single one of those down uh, without damage. If any did come through, they didn't land in a place where they caused any serious damage. Um, Israel sources uh, given to the New York Times said that Iran launched a total of 331 missiles and uh, unmanned aerial uh, vehicles. Uh, not a single one of those penetrated Israeli territory. There were alarms in the major cities of Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, Haifa, uh, Beersheba, but not a single one of the smaller missiles made it through. The, in, the ballistic missiles were coming right into the population areas and were stopped by Israel. That is an amazing thing. Uh, and what most people aren't including in their calculations about what should Israel do next, they're not including what if those missiles hadn't been shot out of the sky by Israel and, the, and their uh, supporters. They would have landed on populated areas. There could have been hundreds of thousands of Israelis killed this weekend by that attack. That's how serious it was. And uh, one other thing I want to just mention that congratulations, Israel's Iron Beam air defense system was operational for the very first time. There hasn't been a lot of talk about that, but that's a big deal because the laser system can actually shoot down missiles that the Iron Dome usually goes for. And the Iron, or the, uh, yeah, the Iron Dome, each missile shot from the Iron Dome costs $80,000. One shot of the laser costs about three or four dollars. That'll just be a game changer as they get that into full production. Well, let's get back into the, some of the stories. Um, so 99% of the launches were intercepted. This is an unprecedented attack, by the way. It's never been done in the history of the world where one nation shot 300 missiles, including 100 ballistic missiles, in one shot, one small time period of an hour or so. Those missiles were shot, uh, and they were all, virtually all uh, shot down. Just a phenomenal thing in both sides of the story. But don't underestimate how serious the attack was. So Ambassador uh, David Friedman, who was under Trump, uh, said that Iran literally attacked the Al-Aqsa Mosque. There were missiles headed at Al-Aqsa Mosque, the Temple Mount, the Gold Dome, the Knesset building, of course, Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, all these cities. And uh, so uh, David Friedman says, this is the time for Israel, the West, and the moderate Sunni nations to unite against this evil terrorist nation. One of the uh, lesser em emphasized parts of this is that Saudi Arabia actually shot down some of these missiles themselves. They later uh, kind of uh, defended themselves or, or tried to separate from being directly helping Israel to say, we shoot down any missiles that go over our territory. And so however they need to say it, that's fine. The point is the Arab Sunni nations have been aligning with Israel with the Abraham Accords and, uh, is, and Saudi Arabia uh, considers their worst enemy. They don't consider Israel their enemy at all anymore. Their enemy is Iran. So they are in agreement with with uh, Iran being defeated. And we need to be aware of that and uh, pray in that direction. Um, here's, a, here's another interesting thing. Jordan Air Force uh, shoots down dozens of Iranian drones flying toward Israel. And uh, they said the same thing Saudi Arabia said. They said, we should shoot down any missiles that fire over our territory. But it happened to be defending Israel, not, uh, not Iran. So Again, that's an encouraging sign, especially Jordan, because uh, they've been more on the fence uh, than the Gulf states and, and Egypt and Saudi Arabia. So uh, I'm glad to see them uh, joining. Of course, the U.S. and even Great Britain and France, I believe, were also involved in shooting down the missiles. It was quite a teamwork affair and a good thing. I praise God for that. 
Now, the Iranian attack cost 5 million shekels in a single night. That's, that's over a billion U.S. dollars. Uh, and this is a factor that's part of the equation. Uh, because Biden has been d just pouring money and releasing money into Iran, they now have billions and billions of dollars that they're putting into terrorism. And Israel has a limited amount of, of defensive missiles. And, and I understand that one arrow missile, which is used to shoot down the, the ballistic missiles, one arrow being shot off costs a million dollars. And they shot evidently a hundred of them last night or Sunday night or Saturday night. And that was, uh, that'd be a hundred million dollars. <laughs> So we got some serious issues uh, that are being considered in all the calculations right now. You need to really pray for wisdom from above. Uh, Israel's dilemma over Iran is a dispute between October 6th and October 7th. This is a great uh, editorial in Jerusalem Post by Yaakov uh, Katz. He said the October 6th Israel would probably let an attack that did virtually no damage slide. The October 7th Israel knows that sending messages of weakness begets more insecurity, which Israel will, uh, which we're Israel will we see today? Is Israel going to be the October 6th Israel or the October 7th Israel in terms of how they respond to this attack? Now, the Biden administration is telling Israel, just let it go, let it go, you know, consider to win that nobody died. Yeah, well, <laughs> That's because of the great defense and God's protection, ultimately. Uh, I don't believe Israel should view it that way. Uh, Iran's Revolutionary Guard started the attack, really, with seizing an Israeli-linked uh, ship with 25 crew members in the Strait of Hormuz, which is over near Iran. And uh, that signaled, really, the start of the hostilities. Now, here's the thing that I want you to notice this headline. The U.S. told Israel, take the win rather than retaliate against Iran. And the U.S. said the U.S. would not participate in any offensive action against Iran following the attack. So if, if, Iran, if Israel is going to do anything, they've got to do it alone without the U.S. and the West. And this, this uh, split kind of fork and tongue messages that come out of Washington and out of uh, Biden are dangerous. And Israel must do what is the right thing to do for their own sovereign nation. If, uh, if a hundred ballistic missiles were fired on Washington, D.C., do you think the United States would say, oh, none of them got through. We'll just take that as a win. No, no problem. No problem. Well, that's, that's ridiculous. So, and yet that's what they're pressuring Israel uh, to take that position. Just, just back down, back off, don't do anything. Well, I hope the October 7th Israel is the one that, that responds because we've already passed all the red lines. There's definite war uh, declared against Israel from Iran and all of its proxies. The good news is that the Arab states are not part of that. They're actually, they, they can't say a lot publicly, but they're actually rooting for Israel to win. And uh, so... I praise God that I believe that ultimately Iran is going to be defeated and all the terrorist proxies. And there's going to be a time of extraordinary peace in Israel. Because that is, I said this over and over, the Ezekiel 38 war, the Gog and Magog war, occurs when Israel is living at a time of peace in a land of unwalled villages, no bars or gates. That kind of peace does not exist, has not existed in modern day Israel. But it will only if Iran is defeated and their proxies. Well, uh, Tim Johnson, uh, uh, Mike Johnson, excuse me, the House Speaker, said it's time to stop lecturing Israel on how it should defend itself. And uh, he blasts the Democrats for their appalling lack of support for Israel, some of the Democrats. He also said that Biden has transformed into an anti Israel president. Um, he's more concerned with placating the anti Semitism in his base than standing with Israel. And I believe that's the truth. Um, now, how could the Israeli Air Force bring Iran to its knees? This is an interesting story. I won't go into all the, the detail, but basically there is there are plans. Israel has been working on them for years. 
Netanyahu has known about in Iran being the main enemy for many years. They have a very detailed plan. Uh, they would take out the the uh, Iranian defense missile systems. Uh, they would attack the nuclear facilities. They would take uh, certain uh, other prime targets, probably the plants that manufacture the, the drones that were sent at Israel. And, and uh, so there, Israel has a plan of attack, and, uh, and we need to just pray that uh, when they do it, that it'll be that uh, it'll be effective and end uh, Iran's hegemony in the, in the Middle East. Well, U.S. officials fear most of the hostages in Gaza could be dead already. Uh, all the talk about releasing the hostages, but U.S. officials think it's possible they're already dead. And uh, so, in fact, um, Hamas claims we know the location of less than 40 hostages. Supposed to be 134 hostages still in Gaza, but Hamas doesn't even know where even 40 of them are, which is the number that's supposed to be uh, released in this deal that actually they've already rejected now. But but uh, that that's something that has to be factored into the calculations now. Uh, now it's not so much about saving the hostages alive. I pray they still will, but uh, Israel got to act. Um, a captured terrorist actually confessed that all Gaza hospitals have been used by Hamas and Islamic Jihad, and they, that, and they just malip, malip, uh, manipulate the uh, media uh, to, with propaganda to say otherwise. Uh, when Israel was fighting in Khan Yunus last week, they uh, actually uh, de they, they destroyed 40 tons of explosives uh, and many terrorists when they took over Khan Yunus. The only remaining city is Rafa. And uh, Hamas is counting on victory through Biden, warns, warns a former uh, intelligence official. Uh, and that really is, they're counting on Biden stopping Israel from finishing the conquest of Gaza. And I'm convinced that Israel will not stop. Um, the, the State Department spokesman last Monday, this just last Monday, uh, actually said that um, we have made clear to Israel that we think a full-scale military invasion of Rafah would have an enormously harmful effect on the civilians and would ultimately hurt Israel's security. So it's not just a question of Israel presenting a plan to us. They had originally, the public thing was that Israel must give us a plan before they invade Rafah. Now he's saying, plan or no plan, we're against it. And so that's what Hamas is counting on. Um, I'm not. I'm counting on the Lord. <laughs> and Netanyahu says, no force on earth can stop us from defeating Hamas. And that was in a meeting with new recruits for the IDF. It says, uh, uh, we will destroy the last Hamas battalions in Rafa, regardless of any international pressure not to do so. Praise God. Uh, another announcement, Israel defenses, uh, IDF will call up two reserve brigades for Gaza. So the call up of of reserves to go into Gaza and finish the job in Rafah is now happening. And Netanyahu said last week that a date has been set for retaking the rest of Gaza. Uh, here's just a kind of a ominous report. An Israeli citizen was arrested for an online plot to assassinate Netanyahu. We need to pray for him. I believe he is, uh, has raised, been raised up by God for this hour. I believe he is God's choice. I believe he listens to God. That's my opinion, but I believe he does. I believe God uh, removed him from office and God put him back in office. And so pray for him. In the United Kingdom, Jews are under threat in a way not seen since the Middle Ages. Uh, all kinds of anti-Semitism, especially in London. In Toronto, anti-Israel protesters express support for the Intifada, the forces of resistance waging war against Israel. That was on Al Quds Day a week ago. Also, Toronto protesters cheered uh, this morning as Iran fired drones at Israel. Uh, Palestinian supporters in the streets of Toronto. Not only Toronto, in Chicago, hands off Iran. Chicago activists applaud Iranian attack on Israel. So really, we're down to a place where it's going to be a choice between Israel and the enemies of Israel. 
the whole world is going to be held accountable for which one they choose. And I'm choosing <laughs> the, the uh, name of the Lord God, Jehovah. Um, and uh, he's, he is fighting for Israel. He says, those who curse Israel will be cursed. Those who bless Israel will be blessed. And here's some good news. Uh, the world's largest Muslim-majority country is, uh, has agreed to normalize relationships with Israel. This goes in line with the Gulf states and Saudi Arabia, uh, the peace treaties between Egypt and Israel, Jordan and Israel. Now, Indonesia, who has more Muslims than any other country on earth, that's a picture of, I think, Jakarta in Indonesia. And then finally, um, Israeli soldiers recite a blessing on Gaza fruit trees. While they're there, and it's in the spring, it's the time for this prayer, uh, they sing this from Genesis 13, 15, For all the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. Make no mistake, Gaza is part of the land that God gave to Abraham and his offspring forever. So we pray for God's purpose to be, got, be done. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, that you love Israel. They're the apple of your eye. And we pray for your protection and for your wisdom for the leaders in this decision they're making and probably have already made this today in, in Israel about their response to this unprecedented attack from Iran. Thank you, Lord. You're uh, going to accomplish your purpose. And all the demons of hell, all the uh, anti-Semitism and the anti-Israel nations of the world cannot stop your blessing of Israel and of the land. Thank you, Father. In the name of your Son, Jesus, I pray. Yeshua ben Yehovah. Amen, amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.